Hi, and um, this session today is on our Krishna Master lot, um, which is practically and really what can you do if you're walking your dog on a lead um, and you are approached by an off-lead dog. Um, and I guess, I mean, you're approached by an off-lead dog whose owner doesn't have the ability to recall them away, or perhaps the owner's too far away. Um, and their dog isn't under close control. And this tends to happen um, to people who have anxious and reactive dogs because uh, these are the other people who are walking our dogs on the lead to help keep them safe. Um, even if you haven't got an anxious or reactive dog though, on lead dog greetings are rarely good um, because dogs can't show natural behavior, they can't move away. So uh, if you have a young dog and you want to allow them to meet and greet, it is better to allow them to have a, certainly a loose lead greeting. You don't want the dogs pulling together with uh, tight leads or adding to the overwhelm of the moment. So it matters then because on lead greetings are not great. And then the worst sort of greeting is your dog is on lead and cannot move away but the other dog has freedom of movement. Um, it puts your dog in a really difficult position because uh, if they are frustration reactive, they'll wanna get to the other dog and play with them. And none of the play will be able to proceed in the way they want because they're on the lead. And if they are fear reactive, uh, they may uh, start to yell at the other dog to try and increase the distance between them. If the other dog doesn't read those signals, what you will end up with is uh, your dog getting more and more anxious, uh, fearful, reactive, cross, and the other dog, uh, because they have freedom of movement, will be moving freely around you, uh, perhaps not reading the messages that your dog is sending. And what can end up happening is your dog is so upset and frustrated, they can end up redirecting on the lead at you or actually uh, lunging to bite at the other dog. Um, so it's really, really bad, uh, bad for dogs to, to meet in this way. Um, clearly not all of the time, uh, but on balance, if you're your dog's advocate, then um, you need to be able to, if you can manage and prevent those sorts of greetings occurring. The best greetings occur when everyone is off lead, where there's plenty of space, and where you and the other dog have agreed in advance, sorry, the other dog's owner, have agreed in advance that you are going to uh, allow them to say hi. Um, so what can you do? Um, so there are some little practical tips. If you are walking a dog on a lead and you don't want to be approached by off lead dogs, there are things that you can do. For instance, walk where there is uh, no fencing and a main road. So if there is a park that butts straight up against a road, people without recall tend not to let their dogs off lead. You might choose to walk only in places or go to the beach where dogs have to be kept on a lead. It doesn't solve all your problems because there will always be someone who thinks the rules don't apply to them um, and who will assume that because their dog is in their opinion friendly, um, that it doesn't matter if they come over. Um, and I don't know if any of you have had the experience where someone shouts, don't worry, my dog is friendly. And then the dog actually does try and attack your dog. People don't always know that their dog is uh, gonna be friendly with all other dogs. How could you ever know that? So uh, just because the owner says their dog is friendly, I think uh, you don't always wanna be trusting that. So walk where dogs either have to be on the lead or they are more likely to be under close control or try and find walks where there are wide open spaces so you can see another dog coming a mile off and put in the relevant space. You might walk in the high-vis tabard that reads my dog needs space, even if they don't. 
because you don't want if you've got a puppy to end up with them becoming a dog who really needs extra space because you keep putting in them in that difficult position so the high vis stuff most owners will uh will be really quite polite and kind and respectful but again there will always be someone who will let their dog come over and meet and greet your dog on a lead even if you're wearing high vis so practically speaking then if your dog is anxious or reactive and there is an off lead dog approaching you have very little that you can do other than run away as quickly as you can uh, pick the dog up if they're a small breed dog and try and run away then um, and honestly that would be my go-to strategy um, it doesn't always work so if someone has their dog off the lead and they literally have no control at all and you run away they'll just chase you uh, so that can be uh, that can bring its own difficulties but if you've got enough space and you think you can get out of a fenced park and behind the gate then and you can do that. However, if you have more than one dog, if you have a push chair or children with you, that may not be an option. Um, and I've certainly had all three of my dogs on leads in a dogs must be on lead park and uh, people have allowed their off lead dogs to approach us. So in reality, what I do is I look at the other dog and I try and read what sort of body language they are giving me um, so you're looking for soft wiggly body language as they approach and you're looking that the other dog might decide to arc around and uh, keep a little bit of space they might look from a distance they may scent from a distance and then what that tells you is they've actually got some dog skills going on and they may read your dog and actually not approach however you do get some dogs who have been conditioned uh, that they uh, should in fact go and approach all dogs in their vicinity when they are off the lead and they will come barreling over regardless. So if you're not able to run away um, and you know that your dog, perhaps you've got a miniature dashi and you've got a 40 kilo German shepherd coming over and your dashi's a bit reactive, um, you can pick your dashi up and you can try and run but that German shepherd is gonna outrun you. So in reality, people will say you can try throwing treats okay you can i think if the other dog is in a reactive state uh that's not going to work so i said watch for you know soft body language if you get a dog walking straight at you with a straight back um i would be trying to run away at speed um or if you feel like you actually have to stop and deal with it um i have in the past and it does work if you just, if you've done training, you know your emergency stop, um, take a really strong step forward and get your really fiercest voice out and shout no and keep shouting no and advancing at the dog. A lot of dogs will just go, oh my Lord, <laughs> she's having some kind of a seizure, we'll leave her alone. But you do have to sound like you are a dog seeing them off and, and adopt that body language yourself. So going into them and shouting no, uh, some dogs will move away from you. Um, other things I've done in the past is when I, I had a stray dog, you kept going for my dogs. And I'm like, man, I have three of you on a lead. I don't know what to do. This dog won't leave me alone. The other thing I have done, you know, with the halty leads, they have the two little clips. I've put two of my dogs on one lead and then I have uh, use the other lead as a slip lead. So if you imagine with a halty lead, you can turn the clip round and clip it round the actual um, lead itself. I've managed to noose the other dog and I had my three dogs this side and then I had this other dog who was not very nice to me, kept trying to bite me, but because I'd noosed it, I had it at arm's length and I walked it home like this, took it to the vet to get its chip read and it was reunited with their owner. Not one person said thank you, but I guess, you know, I had to do something because the dog kept trying to bite my dogs. It was a small breed, um, so it wasn't overly uh, scary to deal with. So prevention is the best strategy. Um, 
But a little bit of preparation, if you see a situation, take time to read that body language. If you think it's uh, friendly, you might try lobbing some food. Um, but if you think there's going to be a situation, you're going to go for your strong no and a step forward. Um, and maybe throwing food and seeing if you can run away. Um, for me personally, with my dogs, I hate putting them in that position. So each of my dogs individually on a lead would probably manage an off lead dog approaching them. But if there are three of my dogs on a lead, we're in a really small space. So if a dog approaches us, you know, usually it will be Annie will start to panic because she's on a lead and there's dogs really everywhere. Um, so the best thing you can do is not put them in that position. So I find there's a real art form to not just going on walks where people shouldn't let their dogs off the lead approach yours, but go on a walk where even though people do, you can manage your dog and keep them safe. So really open spaces or roads, uh, sorry, parks alongside roads uh, help as well. Um, and often there is absolutely no point having a discussion with another owner. Um, all you really need to do if that happens to you, it can be quite scary, is get yourself out of the situation and get your dogs home as quickly as you can. Um, otherwise you're gonna have really anxious, over aroused dogs and humans. So uh, your role is really just to get your dog back home if there has been any sort of incident like that. Um, you'll see on the internet, some people would uh, advocate for carrying pet correct spray. Um, in my experience, if a dog is in an over aroused straight state, pet correct spray doesn't do anything. And you've got to bear in mind, you've got your dogs with you who may be equally scared. And just to give you a bit of background there, you know, Brandon, who you probably all have met at the paddock, uh, back in the day, I have tested whether pet corrector spray would work. And he just said, oh, what's that? <laughs> he was not frightened. So he's a really calm dog. It makes a, a hissing sound and uh, clearly not frightened of that at all. So it didn't work. And I think it's Cintronella spray can be a, a bit of an aversive. So I wouldn't carry that. So um, it is a really difficult topic. I think the thing that I feel having had several dogs now is to accept that other people will always uh, a have their dog off the lead with insufficient recall and b not be good judges of whether or not their dog is friendly um, I've had that happen too often they're like my dog's friendly and then uh, many of you will know Lawrence has been attacked uh, many times when he's been on the lead minding his own business and on each of those times the other owner said oh that's never happened before uh, but their dog was off the lead um, so I am more cautious as the years have passed. And if I go on walks with other dogs, I'll tend to meet people that I know. So my dogs have a series of dog friends and the dogs are all fairly well vetted. And I think post pandemic, when there are more dogs in more dogs that are new to at homes that are new to having dogs. So no previous experience of dog ownership. And there is more dogs in homes with very young people. Um, who may not be able to afford training, behaviour help, et cetera, et cetera. Um, yeah, I tend to keep my dogs at a little bit of a distance unless I know the other dog. I uh, hope that's helpful, guys. It's a really tough, really tough and emotional topic for lots of people. Um, and any, any questions or comments, please feel free to post them and I will get back to you either in the comments or happy to get back to you uh, directly if you'd prefer. Bye for now.